The following broadcast is brought to you by the friends and partners of Revival Ministries International. Lift your hands and just let's pray. Father, let every ear be anointed to hear your word today. And let every heart be receptive to receive all that heaven has, we pray. In Jesus' name, and everyone said, Amen. Amen. You may be seated. For those of you that think maybe our service is a little long, I guess 15 days to slow the spread. <laughs> all right. And uh, 14 days of quarantine please. You can sit here for some hours on Sunday and get saturated with the things of God. Can you say amen? I want you to take your Bibles and go with me to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, the title of the message today, which I'm going to complete tonight. Who's going to be with us tonight? Wave your hand. All those going to be here tonight. Called things to do before you leave the earth. Checklist. Now, People, while you're finding First Thessalonians chapter 5, many people have a bucket list, which I didn't even realize what that was it's before you kick the bucket. How many of you, <laughs> which is a terrible thing. Now I got this bucket list. So in other words, you're in a race to do it before you kick the bucket, which is, God wants you to live your life not looking towards the day where the bucket gets kicked. Amen. amen. Come on now, say amen. amen. How many have a list of things that you want to do between now and the time you go home? Other than eating. <laughs> All right, I'll back off. But these are a checklist of things to do before you leave the earth. And this will affect your eternal destination. Now there's no pilot Well, maybe the early pilots did, you know, when they didn't have much a way of instruments or maps or whatever, they just knew fly in that direction, you know. I've heard some crazy stories about flying where one old boy from Canada flew all the way down to Texas and he just picked a a map, he had a map and he flew above the highway. (laughs) He flew the whole way down, you know. That's probably the long way to fly. Are you with me? But when you get on a plane, there's a checklist. You go around, you check everything. Everybody should be able to, the same with your car. You should actually check your vehicle before you take off down the road to make sure you didn't leave your latte on the roof or your phone on the hood. Okay. How much more in your natural life that you should have a list of things that you need to check to make sure, first of all, that you get to your destination. We were going up, I can't remember where, but we we were going up the 75 and uh, we had to take another, there was a detour. My wife said, now she's gonna sleep. And she said, now watch, be careful, there's a detour. And you're gonna have to get back onto the 75. Well, I took the detour and when when she woke up, we were two and a half hours in the middle of Tennessee somewhere. There was no highways, there was nothing. She said, where in the world are you? I said, well, I took the detour. She said, yeah, but the detour is supposed to take you back to the 75. I said, well, I didn't know where I was, so I didn't wake up. She was sleeping, you know, always let her sleep. And it took us two and a half hours to get back to the 75. So you need to have it all. Most men don't do that. That's why Moses wandered for 40 years in the wilderness. (laughs) Because he never stopped to ask directions, you know. His wife kept saying, please ask directions. I know where I'm going. Trust me. I know where I'm going. How many, how many ladies know what I'm talking about? The husband, he knows where he's going. It's like when the tank is getting down on fuel. She says, we're going to have to fill up. We've got enough. Trust me, we've got enough. Put, put, put. All right. 
I'm trying to help some of the ladies here, but they don't seem that interested in being helped today. All right. We're going to go through this checklist. First Thessalonians chapter 1. But of the times and seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write to you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. In other words, suddenly. But when they shall say peace and safety, then shall come sudden destruction as travail upon a woman with child and they'll not escape. Well, how many of you saw the big peace accord signed between Israel and the UAE? Listen, all of this is happening in fulfillment of what the word of God declares. But let me tell you, it's not going to turn out the way they think. When they cry peace and safety, there will come sudden destruction. So somebody said, well, pastor, does not make you nervous? No, I get excited because I know that the coming of the Lord is very, 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 very close. But ye brethren, how many brethren do we have here today? What about, what about the sisters? You are not in darkness that the day should overtake you as a thief. You're all children of light and children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as others do, but let us watch and be sober. In other words, they're very important. Somebody said, well, it looks like you guys are drunk half the time. Yeah, but we're drunk on the new wine of heaven. But you don't want to be under the influence of alcohol and all kinds of weed and all kinds of drugs and all that kind of stuff. You want to be sober. And that's all I'll say about that. For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that are drunken are drunken in the night. But let us who of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. For God has not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us. Whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Wherefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another, even as you also do which you can only do when you're meeting together. You can't do when you're socially distancing in another place. Hello. Hello. When your major companion has become Siri. What's the other one? Alexa. Alexa, who am I? Alexa, do you like me? I mean, people get lonely. They're talking to Alexa. <laughs> and we beseech you, brethren, to know them who labor among you. How can you know them that labor among you if you're socially distant? And are over you in the Lord and admonish you. That means your spiritual leadership. Those that God has put in the house. And to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake. And be at peace among yourselves. Everybody say, be at peace among myself. And myself. Amen. <laughs> All right. Now, flip back to uh, chapter 4, if you would please. Chapter 4, and I want to read verse 13. But I would not have any of you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, people that are dead in Christ, that you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. So in other words, loved ones that have died in Christ, you'll see them again. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain under the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. How many are comforted knowing that the day is coming when the trump of God's going to sound 
and we're going to rise to meet the Lord in the air. Can you say amen? amen. There's going to be a meeting in the air and the sweet, sweet by and by. Amen. amen. And it could be any time. You have no clue when it's going to happen. It could be the remain, well, not maybe August, but maybe September. <laughs> because I already prophesied it's going to be great harvest in August. So it must be September then. <laughs> I mean, when you think about it, somebody said, Pastor, we can't be that close. We, we, we are so close. We're so close to the coming of the Lord. Now, when we first started this church back in December of 1996, back in the last century, the Lord said to me, I want you to have a place to prepare my people for eternity. Those were the instructions that God gave me for this church, which I have traveled the world, 85 countries over 40 years in the ministry, and I never heard another pastor talk along those lines. I never heard a pastor, like, why did you start the church? Well, the Lord told us to have a place to prepare people for eternity. That's what he said to me. So I take this probably a little differently to what other people do because I realize the gravity of the situation here. That now what we started December of 96, here we are in August of 2020. We've had over 4,000 people graduate from the River Bible Institute and people around the world now, you know, many people that have come through here. So I don't take this lightly. I'm responsible for people's eternal destination. That means I have to preach the whole counsel of God. I have to preach everything. I can't just preach what people want to hear. I have to preach everything to get people ready. You are children of light, not of darkness. If you slipped in here today and you come from the children of darkness, we can afflict that switch today. Everything's gonna change. Now I want you to take a pen and paper, and if you can write this down, it will help you. These are things that you can put on your checklist, which you probably need to check them on a regular basis. Amen. What's the first thing he tells us that we should not do? We must not sleep. Everybody say, I must not sleep. sleep. Somebody said, oh, that's just great. I, I already have a problem sleeping. <laughs> and Pastor told <laughs> telling me that I can't sleep. He's not talking about natural sleep. How many realize that there are many people that are sleeping spiritually? Even in the church. It's like they have no understanding of what's actually going on. It's like you want to grab them and shake them and wake them up from their slumber and say, don't you understand what is actually taking place here? There's people, there's ministers now having to stand and fight that had they stood with me 150 days ago, it would have turned out differently. Can you imagine if 10,000 pastors had said, absolutely not, we had shut nothing down. We would have been in a whole different set of things. And I didn't do it because I'm trying to be rebellious or trying to be obstinate or I'll show them. I had actually no option. Now, I don't have time to get into it. There was no option for me. If I had a shutdown, I would have to leave the ministry and I'd have to renounce my American citizenship and leave America because I swore to defend the constitution and I knew what is at stake. Are you with me? So I had no, I had no choice. You know, people say, well, it's such a great thing to do. Thank you for, for standing. I had no choice. <laughs> it's not, it wasn't even an option. It was like, what should I do? Should I even do? There was no choice. There's no choice. For others, there's a choice. For me, there was no choice. We must not sleep. Say, I must not sleep. I must not sleep. Say, I will not sleep spiritually. I will not sleep spiritually. I'll be awake. Firstly, don't sleep. Number two, be sober. Be sober. What happens when you get intoxicated with other substances? It takes your attention away from what God's purpose is for your life. Why do people get drunk? Why do people get high? Why do people smoke weed? Why do they snort cocaine? Why do they make all kinds of drugs to get a high? 
Really, you know what they're doing it for? To escape. There is coming the time when the Lord takes you out of here. But your job is not to escape. Because let me tell you, when you sober up, it's actually in a worse condition than when you went in. Then you think, well, I better just have some more. And you just stay until you OD. People are overdosing on every side. They said the, the amount of ODs has gone through the roof. It's gone very quiet here now. Somebody went, Pastor, it's medicinal. It's a fact that people that smoke weed live in total fear. They always think somebody's coming after them. And everything they do is they fish on the left. It's a fact. It's a fact. The moment you sober up, you see things straight. That's it. Everybody say, I'm so, I'll be sober. If I'm going to drink, I'm going to drink new wine. If I'm going to get happy, I'm going to get happy in God. If I'm going to get called crazy, it's because I'm drunk on the new wine of heaven. Amen. Then he says, put on the breastplate of faith and love. The breastplate of faith and love. That protects your heart. Are you with me? It must say faith and love, faith and love. Protects, my heart. protects my heart. What does the Bible say? Protect your heart with all diligence for out of it flow the issues of life. You have to protect your heart in this time. There's many opportunities for you to get upset and get angry, especially in this time. People are betraying one another. People are turning one another in. Families are disowning their own families over this nonsense. Well, you can't come see grandma. You've been exposed to that them COVID-19. And we don't want you to kill grandma. People are, people are being cut off from their family. You know, the Bible says in the last days, people will be without natural affection. Natural affection means that you care nothing for your mother. This, this family right now that have cut their mother off. No, no, we, 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 you can't come see your grandkids. So we, who's had every opportunity to get offended here in the last five months? Huh? Wave your hand. Get offended. Not here yeah, because of me or because of other things. You've just, <laughs> oh yeah, no, I'll tell you what. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but you've had, <laughs> let, let's rephrase that. You, you've had opportunity to get offended over something that has happened. You have to forgive immediately. You've got to forgive. And I'm going to get into that. Protect your heart. Everybody say, I will protect my heart. And I will wear the breastplate of faith and love. See, love, perfect love casts out all fear. So what, what are we dealing with on the planet right now? Everybody's afraid they're going to die. That's why they're all afraid. Where's your mask? Put your mask on right now. Don't breathe on me, even though I'm breathing on you. <laughs> well, I'm screaming at you. People are afraid they're going to die because they don't know where they're going to go. Yeah, that's true. That's true. That's right. wow. I mean, there's a 0, 0.00 whatever 5% chance of you croaking through this thing. Seriously. But people are afraid. The whole world is afraid. And the media are just pumping their fear the whole time. But everybody say this often to me. Perfect love, love. casts out all fear. 
faith. Faith not in the who. Faith not in government. Faith in the word of God. Faith in God moves the mountains. Faith in God calms the storms. Faith in God brings the victory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Standing on his word, trusting him, knowing that he will never leave you nor forsake you. He's on your side, he's for you. He's not sitting there planning your demise. God didn't wake up with them in a bad mood. Ah, let's see what I can do. <laughs> I'm gonna kill him. I'm gonna kill him today. I'm gonna kill him all. I'll show them who's God. <laughs> he, 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 please, I, I don't know what Bible people are reading, but that's not God. And you think God's phased by anything that's even taken place? Like he didn't know what was going on? We know the Bible tells us that there'll be pestilence, there'll be plagues, there'll be wars, there'll be rumors of wars and all that. But the end is not yet. I said the end is not yet. So he goes on from the breastplate to talk about the helmet. A helmet is an important thing so you don't bump your head. You know... We have helmet laws. We used to have a helmet law for motorcycles. And there was a lady, I believe this took place in Clearwater, who championed against wearing helmets and she managed to get a law passed in the state of Florida so that people didn't have to wear helmets. She walked out of the court case, got on her motorcycle, went 20 minutes and crashed and killed herself because she had no helmet. Can you imagine that? You fought for the law to remove the helmet. Do you know that your head is like a watermelon? It's like, it's like a pumpkin. I mean, it's really, when you think about it, there's very little holding it there. Just a little bit of, <laughs> I, mean, I mean, there's a brain. I didn't say you didn't have a brain. I mean, that is so, your, your head is so soft when you think about it. Are you with me? And speaking of that, you have, a, you have a greater chance of falling out of bed and dying than dying from COVID-19. Anyway, <laughs> I just want to throw that up. But your head, how many know your head is soft? Yeah. Who's ever bumped your head? Is it sore? Yeah. Who ever hurt your head? It's a terrible thing when you hurt your head. He talks about a helmet of salvation. You have to put that helmet, you have to make sure that helmet's on. That's part of your checklist. You know what that means? <laughs> you know what that means? You know where you're going. When you saved, you know where you're going. Because he calls it the hope of salvation. You don't see born again, saved people walk around. I tell you, I'm just not sure I'm going to go to heaven. That's why the last thing I always give on, on, in the altar call is if you don't have the assurance. Why? Because I meet many people that don't have assurance that they're saved. So I want to make sure they get the helmet. So they leave the service with the helmet and they know that I'm saved. I, if I die right now, I'm going straight to be with Jesus. The hope of salvation. Can you say Amen. Everybody say the helmet. The helmet. So I'm, I, I'm sleeping with my helmet on. Say it after me. Say, I'm sleeping with my helmet on. Yeah. And you especially need a helmet. You don't have any hair. Do you know that your hair actually protects your head? Do you know that? You didn't know that. Yours is inverted. All right, the next thing on the checklist, not appointed to wrath. Now the Bible says be angry, but don't sin. So for a person that doesn't get angry about anything, there must be something wrong with you. Are you with me? A anger is actually not all bad. That's why he says be angry and don't sin. 
You have to get angry at the devil. You have to get angry at sin. You have to get angry at that which is coming to attack your family. If, if you had no anger in you, you sit there and a wolf will come right in and eat your child in front of you and you just sit there. Oh yeah, well, win a few, lose a few. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's anger that spurs you to immediately spring up and do something about it. Are you with me? But, he, but the Bible's very plain about it. Be angry and sin not. You know, God gets angry. So if anger was sin, then God would be sinning. But he doesn't sin. But there's a godly anger. So we, we are not appointed to wrath. So this, you have to, you have to make sure, to, because this comes back to protecting your heart. If you always walk around angry about everything, angry, you, you're just mad about everything. My God, angry. How many of you ever met people, they're always angry about everything? It doesn't matter what it is, they're going to be angry about it. No, I mean, a lot of stuff also is related to your health, medical condition. And I don't have time to get into that, otherwise people think I'm a doctor, but I'm, you know, not that kind of a doctor. But if certain parts of your body are not working properly, people's anger, they, they flares up and they don't know why. I don't know why I'm so angry. That's the reason I brought you inside. <laughs> but we've got to keep our heart pure. And you know, I, I mentioned this about getting offended. You're gonna to have to walk in love. You're gonna to have to walk in forgiveness. And you can get angry, but don't sin. Don't sin. You know, you, you know you're sinning when you remember every detail. Hello. There are things that people have done in, over the years in the ministry. And I promise you, I don't remember any of this stuff. People come to the church over what, well, how many years now? 20, 23 and a half years. Okay, 23 and a half years of the church and they cause trouble and then they leave. 10 years later, they show back up there and I go, hi, how are you doing? Good to see you. I don't remember anything. People come, but Pastor, you remember what they did? I don't remember anything. Because I don't walk around with a little book listing everybody's problem. I can't minister carrying a book, remembering every detail of every book person, I, and I'm not gonna do it. I, when I get up here, I minister totally free, without any thing, no strings attached. I only hear, I hear from the Lord and say exactly what the Lord says. Somebody said, well, it hit me right between the eyes. Well, that's not my problem, that's yours. And you know, if the cat's first getting rubbed the wrong way, let the cat turn around. But I'm not coming out, well, I'll tell you, I'm going to go out there and I'm going to address that and I'll address that. I'll show them what, that's not how you minister. But genuinely before the Lord, and I say this many times because people have showed up and I can't remember what they did. I don't have no clue what they did. They have to remind me. And then when I get reminded, I go, really? They did that? Seriously? No, they would never do that. No, Pastor, they did. All right, well, hey, everybody can, can grow. Now, he says to us that we will live together with him, and he says we must comfort ourselves and edify one another, which again, that's very hard to do when you're socially distant. We have to comfort one another. Every one of you should be comforting somebody in this hour. That's part of your checklist. You, you want to get to heaven and you were comforted, but you comforted nobody. Comfort everybody. My phone goes constantly. I'm talking to people around the world. I mean, I've had to actually set aside some, and I'm getting a lot of sleep now, more than I did six weeks ago. I was sleeping like three hours a night. I promise you, I'm, I'm actually sleeping through the night now, and I, I really am resting, and I'm getting a rest. Okay, so... Um, but <laughs> you should be comfortable. I call people and just encourage them. And 
I knew that I was kind of like at the end of myself when I didn't want to talk to anybody. I told my wife, I ain't talking to anybody. I don't care if they're dying, they can be falling off a cliff. Don't call me. I'm not answering them. No, I mean, that's the way I felt about it, which that's not me. Are you with me? So the moment I rest, immediately I'll be sitting there. I have like 3,500 phone numbers in my phone. Okay. Well, I've had, I've been deleting some. Um, <laughs> I have, because you find out who your friends are when you get arrested, you know what I mean? But, uh, <laughs> yeah, I've been blocking some too, but yeah, delete block, delete block. I've learned a lot of delete block. I've got a lot of the delete block action going on, you know. Um, but, uh, so I'll be sitting and suddenly the Lord say, I want you to call this person. And these people that I haven't spoken to, I called somebody I hadn't talked to in 20 years. Just called him out the blue. And I said, how are you doing? They said, how are you doing? And we had the greatest chat for like a half an hour, you know, and just encouraged them and whatever. And it wasn't because, you know, I didn't want to talk to them. It's just we never spoke. So when you have that many names, God will bring, there, there are times that God will bring members of the congregation. I see your face, come before me. And I'll call one of the pastors, find out what's happening with that person. It's the craziest thing. We are to comfort one another. We are to encourage one another. Edify. You know what edify means? Build up. Ask yourself the question, when I leave somebody's presence, do they feel encouraged or do they want to hang themselves? (laughs) Hey, you know you're not edifying somebody when they leave your presence and they said to the wife, let's just find the first tree. You, 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 you know you've edified people when they leave your presence and they feel, I can do this. I can, I can run through a troop. I can leap over a wall. Are you with me? Yeah. Encourage. Yeah. Edify. Yes. One another. It's important. I said it's important. And in order to, for that to happen, you have to, you have to encourage yourself. Yeah. You have to encourage yourself. You have to edify yourself. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Sometimes you have to speak to yourself. When you brush your teeth, look at yourself in the mirror and take authority. And you speak to yourself about the day, about how it's going to go. Amen. Amen. Encourage yourself. I know this is great stuff, yeah, but. Say, so I, I comfort myself. I comfort my wife, my husband, my children. I'm single, Pastor. I have no one to com- comfort yourself. Sometimes you comfort yourself just by going and getting your hair done. Huh? Or your nails done. All the ladies said amen. Then the next thing on your checklist, he said, know them that labor among you. You know, that's why we built the home groups across the city so that we could help take care of the people. I think the most frustrating thing for me has been the ones that never got into home groups or didn't even associate with the home group and we've even lost contact with them during the course of this thing. And they're just aloof. Do you know that they said I don't know what the statistic, maybe you have the latest statistic, but they said that there's a high percentage of churches that have never been back to the church. And even when they open up, they are not even planning to go back to the church. It could be higher, it could be 50%. I don't believe that's here at the river. 
I mean, I believe that there are some that aren't able to come back basically because of retirement homes, senior assisted living homes, and then some of the areas of the city that's still closed off to us. But for the numbers, you know, looking at everything, and we're going to try to call every member of the church here in the next couple of weeks just to check up on them once again. Because we feel responsible as pastors to make sure that the flock is doing well. Are you with me? But he said, know them that labor among you and that are over you in the Lord and admonish you. And I'm going to say this, you know, I don't, I don't do this often or say this often. I'm going to say, please pray for us. I mean, pray for me, pray for my wife, pray for our pastors. I mean, seriously, like seriously pray. If you can do that every day, just lift us up in prayer that we make the right decision. Are you with me? He goes on to say here, and esteem them highly in love for their work's sake, not for worship, because we worship the king. Are you with me? But you have to recognize where God's placed you, which family the Lord's placed you in. It's like, when I walked into the house, I always knew dad's home. You always, you always knew. And trust me, mom, she, she could, <laughs> I mean, remember, she's a little short lady. Probably not much tall, maybe the same size as you, my mother. But that left hand would come moving faster than a speeding bullet. <laughs> And there's a comfort in that. There's a comfort in that. Maybe you've had a bad house or home experience and you live with abuse or whatever. But I promise you, in God's family, those things should not be, and there should not be any abuse in the kingdom of God. We are not here to control any person. We're not here to manipulate any person. We're here to feed the flock. We're here to put the word of God on the inside of you. We're here to help you grow. And we're here to help you accomplish heaven's purpose and plan for your life. Not to hold you back. Not to tell you, no, you're not ready. If you feel ready, you can do whatever God has called you to do. And you can launch. We are not going to hold you back. Even if I felt you weren't ready, I'm still going to let you go. Someone said, yeah, but pastor, if I wasn't ready, what? you come back. So this is important that you have to understand why church is important and why being here today is important. This is part of your your spiritual discipline, your spiritual practice. We could be anywhere. We could be be at home right now. We could be uh, lying at the the first church of St. Mattress (laughs) with Apostle Pillow. And prophet duvet. <laughs> and I'm no doubt there are people right now still sitting in their bed watching live from Thona to Sasa. There's no doubt there's people in bed watching with one eye from Mango. Just because they couldn't get themselves out of bed and they couldn't shower and put some clothes on and come to church. It's not even that they're afraid of COVID. Because you should see where they go on Saturday. And you should see what they do on Friday. And they were just at the beach on Thursday. Oh, yeah. You think I don't see Instagram? Yeah. Ah. I know where you've been. Don't blame the church. Now, are you still writing? Now, this, this might not sound like something that you want to do, but this is what he instructs us to do. He says to warn the unruly. (laughs) 
How many know that we are dealing with many unruly people running around right now? You have to warn them. This is not the time for looting, pillaging, burning, thieving, thumping. Hello. I tell you what, I thank God for the city of Tampa right now. And I was talking to the sheriff, um, the sheriff that arrested me. I, I actually, I thanked him for what, no, no, I mean, listen, we, he and I are friends. We're friends. We are friends. I know you don't like it, but he's my friend. But I was talking to him. I said, I thank you. No, because he shut the whole thing down. He shut down whatever's been going on. And I said, because I spoke to him, I said, do you realize they want to burn the city of Tampa to the ground? Do you understand that? Do you understand they want to defund the police? Do you understand they want to get rid of all the Tampa Police Department? And he looked at me and said, Dr. Rondon, that will never happen. I said, that's the plan. So they can bring in the United Nations Police Force. So I'm very thankful right now. We pray over the city of Tampa, obviously, but I'm very thankful that for the most part, the stuff's been locked down. The stuff's been shut down. On that night when they were raiding and looting and burning in the university, they were taking pictures of everybody's license plate. Two weeks later, everybody was arrested. Are you with me? So, he, you know, obviously they took him by surprise, but he said, we weren't sleeping. We took pictures of everybody's license plate. So two weeks later, they all got a visit. And anyway, the ones that stole the computers and the, 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 the iPhones, the moment they logged in, Apple notified the police said, oh, we found the missing stolen good. Are you with me? So, and that's what's been happening all over the country in certain places. Antifa, the people rioting and looting, Black Lives Matter, they've been taking out the leadership. Taking out the leadership, just taking them out, lock them up. Because these are paid terrorists being funded to create anarchy in America to overthrow Western civilization. You might not understand that, but I can give you all the data. I've got the information. I know what's going on. How does Black Lives Matter have a voice when they let little white people with pasty faces? Excuse me. Shut your white face up. because they paid perpetrators. You know, you know, it's like that whole thing, you know you're a redneck if, you know you're a terrorist if. You're fighting for a cause that you have nothing to do with. You're a paid terrorist. All right, moving right along. And then people say, well then you must be a racist. No, those are the racists. And let me tell you, those are the racists. You can't just go into a neighborhood and tell people, you need to get out of your house, I'm taking over your house. That's not the way the thing works. It doesn't work that way. If there's anybody you need to do that, go to the government and throw them out of office. But you can't go to the people. It's not the people, it's the stinking corrupt government. So put your big boy pants on and go do that in Congress and throw those lying politicians out of office. And then maybe you're gonna get something. You start messing with American people and you're gonna meet Mr. AR-15. I'll just tell you right now. You'll meet Mr. Smith and his wife, Wesson. No, this is not a game. You cannot allow anarchy and terror where people just come and do whatever they want to do. You have to warn the unruly. Some of these people need a belting. Somebody need to take them in a back room and spank their behinds. So they can't sit for a week. Amen. Everybody say, warn the unruly. Somebody said, boy, I better behave myself here at the River Church. (laughs) But then there's also comfort, comfort for the feeble-minded. Now, how many understand that there are a lot of feeble-minded people? 
So you don't hurt them. You have to comfort them. Everybody say, say this on me. Comfort the feeble-minded. There's just going to be people that are feeble-minded. They don't have strong minds. They're easily swayed. And God's going to put some of those people in your life not to terrorize you. We, even though sometimes you go, why? Why me, Lord? Why? Why? Is this something I did wrong? But the Lord puts them in your life so that you can help them and you can comfort them and walk them through the process. You actually have to think for them and get into their head and dissolve those fears. But you can't do that if you haven't done it in your own head. Amen. Amen. Support the weak. Not everybody is strong. Not everybody is strong. Support the weak. I thought people would be really cheering over this, but. (laughs) We've got to help people. The job of the church, the job of the church, the body of Christ, not the building. The job of the church is to help people. We're to help people. And he says here, be patient to all men. Which I know. People listen to me preach and then they think I have no patience. They actually don't. My wife will tell you how much patience I have. Because there are times that she says, I can't believe that you didn't say something. I can't believe you didn't. My wife will be, and give me the phone, you know. But no, because I feel myself concerned. I mean, I'm bold in my preaching, but I'm really, I'm, I love people. I'm not like, I don't want to kill anybody. Somebody says, you just mentioned AR-15. I just mentioned it, but I don't want to kill anybody. Are you with me? I, I could never personally kill somebody. I couldn't because I know, I know the ramifications of what that means. Now, I will protect my wife and my kids, my grandkids. That's a different story. But for me, I don't really care about me. I don't live in fear or whatever about my life. I'm not worried about my life. I'm not worried about dying or anything. So I, I'm not like... Oh, they're going to kill me. Oh, you're going to kill me? Well, then come on down. Just let me know when you start. Let the killing begin, you know. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to, I don't, I, mean, I don't, I don't live in fear. But, but I genuinely love people. And I realize that the moment a life comes to an end, there's only one of two places that life's going to go. And I personally do not want to be responsible for sending somebody straight to hell. So it's not, a, it's not a light thing. So we to, to help the weak. When you, when you finish your race, you have to ask, how many weak people did I help? How many feeble-minded people did I, did I comfort? And did I warn the unruly? And sometimes that might start with your own children. Oh. Oh, 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 oh. All right, don't forget tonight. No. <laughs> No, because sometimes people, they they let their children be unruly. The kids do whatever they want to do. Yeah. You stand there and you just think, did nobody teach them how to raise kids? These kids are not even being raised. They're being brought, they're being thrown up. Look, we were taught certain things. (laughs) <laughs> there were certain things we weren't allowed to do. And certain things my parents might not have said anything. But boy, when you got home, you knew you said, hey, hey, hey. The, put it this way, the ride home in the car was very quiet. <laughs> and you wish you took the long way home because you knew by the time you got home, it just wasn't going to be good. How many can testify to what I'm talking about? So the unruly starts with the little ones. The unruly... Don't think those two-year-olds don't know what they're doing. They know exactly what they're doing. Put a little pop through a, through a, a thick diaper. They can't feel anything. They don't even know that you discipline them. And then they burst out laughing, looking at you. Wait until they're 13 and watch what they're going to do with you. So the unruly starts in your own life, of course. And then in your family. And then to the neighbors. I mean, if you've got an unruly neighbor, obviously people are going crazy now, but let me leave that alone. I, Lord have mercy. I, 
That's another whole sermon in itself. How to deal with unruly neighbors. What do you do when they're sending fire rockets into your house and killing your dog? All right, let me wrap this up here quickly and then we'll carry on. We'll carry on tonight. Don't repay evil for evil. Like they did something to your pro- I'll tell you what, you watch, I'm going to be a bulldozer. I'm going to go down there and I'm going to flatten the house. I'm going to take a bulldozer, I'm going to level their place. Because, because that's what anger will do. And then you lose your mind. Look what happened in Carolina with this, they were neighbors. And the little boy rode his bike, five years old, on the grass. And the neighbor walked out and, and blew him away in front of his two sisters. Yeah. So a little white kid, African-American neighbor. And they, apparently that they had eaten a meal the day before or two before. They'd shared a meal together. And they asked the man, why did you kill the five-year-old? Because he rode on my lawn. So what does it take when, when suddenly the kid's five-year-old on his bike? He's five years old. He's on his bike. You just walk out and you take your gun, you stick it in your head and blow his brains out in front of his sisters. And that's the, that's the stuff that's going on. So don't repay evil for evil. Well, it's just terrible road on my grass. It's only your grass. It's just your lawn. Hello. Who's ever been a victim of road rage? Somebody tried to swear you off the road. You have to watch yourself. Because there's a switch that goes off in your head and you charge them down. I'm taking them out, you know. <laughs> That's why I don't want to even go there. I mean, I just, I'll back right off and just move to the side and just let them go on. Because, you know, you don't want to end up in that place where you're out of control. Why is everybody just looking at me? <laughs> Someone said, well, I've never done it. Yeah, but you thought about doing it. Absolutely. And that's the worst thing. That car already blew up in front of you. No, you did it in your head. <laughs> you know. It's getting very quiet here now. No, because I know there's a lot of people that don't understand why I'm not mad with the sheriff. Wow. I know there's a lot of people. You angry, you angry because I got arrested, but I'm not angry because I got arrested. And I'm genuinely not mad with the sheriff. I wasn't even mad with the sheriff when I was getting arrested. I don't understand that, Pastor. Well, I don't understand it either, but the Lord sustained me, and I'm actually happy I got arrested now. I have more friends now that I got arrested. (laughs) And I found out that the ones I thought were my friends were not my friends, so that helped me too. It's very, very revealing. I've got to speed this up. I'll take just another few minutes. Follow what is good. Internally and externally. Follow what's good. Follow what is good. Flee from what is bad. Stay away from people of bad influence. Stay away from people that are planning evil. Stay away from people that are always criticizing, judging, always talking bad about everybody, knows everybody's garbage, knows their underwear, the color of the underwear. You want to stay away from those people. I don't want to know anything. I, don't, I want to hear nothing. And sometimes you just get, get yourself up and walk away from the conversation. Because in the early days, you'd sit there because you don't want to be rude. And the older I get, which I'm still young, but the older I get, I realize I ain't doing that. I, I'm, I'm believing God for too much. I'm believing God to see too many breaks. I don't want to hear about it. Well, let me tell you about it. I don't want to hear anything about it. Please don't tell me anything. And even if you tell me, I'm going to forget about it. Because I don't want to have that in my head. Amen. Follow what is good. Everybody say, I'm following what is good. good. Then he says, rejoice evermore. Rejoice. 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 
You see joy? Joy is there. Rejoice. 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 Evermore. Pray without ceasing. Pray. Talk to the Lord on your bed, when you're lying on your bed, in the middle of the night, when you wake up. Every waking moment in the shower, when you drive down the road, talk to the Lord. Talk to Him and then listen. Let Him speak to you. Pray without ceasing. In everything, give thanks. These are checklists. This is stuff. If you do this, you'll be fine. You're going to be okay. You'll be safe. You'll be covered. In everything, give thanks. Not for everything. Well, I was trying to thank God for this arthritis in my right leg. That's not what he said. In everything, in everything, give thanks. Not for everything. Not everything comes from God. Are you with me? Quench not the spirit. In other words, when the Holy Spirit's speaking to you, do it. Do what he tells you to do. Do not quench him. Despise not prophesying, which I did a two-part series on being led by the Spirit, which I probably should have done for 12 weeks. But the bottom line is, we're not led by prophecy. Prophecy confirms what we already know, but we don't despise prophecy. Amen. Amen. Thank God for the prophetic word of the Lord that confirms to us what God is saying to us. And then he says, prove all things, hold fast to what is good. Everything should be tested in your own life because it works for me doesn't mean to say it's going to work for you. You have to take it and test it for yourself. Are you with me? So it becomes something that's real to you. Well, I tell you, I believe this because Pastor Rodney. No, 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 no. You, I have to believe this because me, because I believe it, not because somebody else believes it. It might be a word that came to him, but then it's a word that came to you. Are you with me? Hold fast to what is good. Abstain from all appearance of evil. In other words, if you're married, don't be sit in a car with a, another woman that's not your wife. Or find yourself in a situation where you're with somebody that's not your wife. Be very careful. Abstain. Even though there may be nothing going on, abstain from all appearance of evil. Protect yourself. Can you say amen? Amen. Now there's, there's a whole bunch more, which I will give you tonight. But if you take these things and you run through these things, then you know that when he comes, you, you're ready. You're ready. How I many you know if, if you adhere to these things I've just given you, that if, if the Lord came at three o'clock this afternoon, you, you're all going with him. How I many you know that? Why? Because these, that's what he said. I didn't make that up. That's actually right out of the scripture. I was just repeating to you what I read right at the start of the message. And I do this because I want every single one of you there. It would be the worst nightmare to get to heaven and find out that some of you didn't make it. And especially you didn't make it because it was my fault because I never taught what I'm supposed to teach. So I'd rather you get mad at me even because I took a little longer Hello? Because how many know hell is a long time? There's no end to it. It's total torment. Total torment. I want every one of you to make heaven. Look at me. I want every one of you to make heaven. Amen. 
Listen to me. I want every single person in this room and you that are watching to make heaven. I don't want one of you to be lost. Not one lost. I don't even want my worst enemy to be lost. So that's why you should pray for your enemies or pray for those that spitefully use you. That God would turn them around and bring them to repentance. You know, let me close with this. Sin is a terrible thing. because it comes by deception. You don't go to sleep on fire and you wake up at nine o'clock, you robbing the first national bank or whatever. Nothing happens by accident. Everything happens because it came as a thought and then you begin to meditate upon it and maybe it took a year or two or three. And then that became a stronghold. And then you actually ended up doing exactly what you said you'd never do or couldn't even believe that you would do. And then you don't know how you did do it. And sometimes it can happen by just hanging around the wrong people, people that compromise and people that allow certain things, hey, come on, it's, it's okay. I know they preach this over there, but you don't really have to do that. You know, we, 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 we grace, we got grace. That's why we've had, and we have strict rules about alcohol here at the river, at the school, because I've lost too many good preachers to, to alcoholism. That's right. Great ministers. Total drunkards. What do you mean? And I've had to deal with them on the phone when they're drunk. So we said, what do you do when they call you and they're drunk? I read scripture to them. I plead with them. And I've, I've been able to turn a few around. But I can't lose another person to alcohol. Amen. And I sure don't want to lose you to weed. Amen. Amen. How many have somebody that you're helping, maybe that's not even at the church right now, but they, they're weak, they're feeble-minded or whatever, and you're carrying them, your faith is carrying them. You believe in God, they're going to come through. Don't let them go. Do not let them go. In your prayers, don't let them go in your faith. Don't let them go. You carry them. They're going to make it. They will come through the other side. The power of the enemy over their life broken by the power of the blood of Jesus. They just don't know it yet. Don't give up on your family. Don't give up on some friends. Don't give up on some loved ones. God is gonna bring them around. They're not gonna go to a devil's hell. Amen. Amen. And the Bible says to him that overcome. And ultimately when we get to the other side, Every single person will, would, be, would be an overcomer. Every single person. And I know you think that there's preachers that don't have problems or there's people in the, in the body of Christ that don't have problems. <laughs> I've been around too long. Everybody's got problems. Are you listening to me? I don't care who the preacher is. If you knew everything behind the scenes, you'd go, oh my God. Because God uses ordinary people. God uses ordinary people. Should I say it one more time? God uses ordinary people. Say this after me. God uses, God uses ordinary, people, ordinary people, just like me. So you should rejoice. I said you should rejoice. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many of you to hear this today? So I'm going to make it. My family's going to make it. 
Everybody around me going to make it? In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So be the example of, let's say you're on a journey. I'll close with this. I am closing, but you're going, you're going we're past the island, is that's the, the, the road. But you're getting very weak. You're about to fall down, okay? You can't even make it any, any further. My job is to come and to pick him up and to help him and to walk him. Okay, sometimes you've got another person on this side. Oh, you, that's how it feels in leadership. You carry, you carry them. When you leave the ministry, it's like through the night, you're praying for them. Are you with me? To bring them to the finished destination. And then what do you do? When you've done that, you find somebody else. Then you pick them up. And then you carry them and move them to the finished destination. And you do it with the next person. And even people that people have given up on say, there's no hope. You'll never be able to help them. You say, okay, come here. And come on, come on. Can you do it? Can you do it? Will you do it? Come on. We're running a race. We're going to take as many people with us before we leave the earth. All right, I went too long. Every head bowed, every eye closed. <laughs> Oh, man, I love the church so much. I love you guys. You people are awesome. So honored to be here today. So glad that we could even meet Amen. when our brothers and sisters around the world can't even meet. While heads are bowed and eyes are closed, if you are here in the sanctuary today or watching by way of television, you've never given your life to Jesus. You've never said, Jesus, be my Lord and Savior. I want to give you this opportunity today to say, Lord, please come into my heart. You have to personally do that. Nobody can do that for you. No pastor can do that for you. You have to invite Jesus yourself to come and take your, over your life and have full control. Will you do that today? You might never have another opportunity. Today, your life could be required of you. You could go home, put your head on your pillow, and in the middle of the night, you're gone. Where will you spend eternity? I want you to know there's a heaven to gain and a hell to shun. You don't have to go to devil's hell because 2,000 years ago on Calvary's cross, the price was paid, the blood was shed. And just like that old song said, there is a fountain filled with blood, drawn from Emmanuel's veins, sinners plunged beneath their blood, lose all their guilty stains. Today, the power of sin will be broken, the power of guilt, the power of shame, Shame will be broken off of you. You might have come in your one way, but you'll leave another way. Today, he calls you. Will you surrender to him today? Secondly, maybe you've come into place. You gave your life to the Lord, but you grew cold. You've allowed the things of the world to come in. You've lost your first love. You lost that peace, that joy. There was a time when you were radically on fire, but you allowed pride, unforgiveness, bitterness, jealousy, anger, lust, hidden things to come and clog your heart. It didn't happen overnight. It happened over a series of events, over a series of number of years. But today you say, I'm coming back. I'm going to fall in love with Jesus all over again. Maybe it's not hidden. Maybe it's something that's outward, that the enemy got you in a trap and you fell into it and other people know about it and you feel, well, what does it even help? Everybody knows I'm a mess. But let me tell you, God is a God of a second chance and a new beginning. Will you surrender your life afresh to Him today and He will restore to you? Even if you took a journey for a number of years, God will restore the years that the locusts have eaten, the caterpillar, the canker worm, and the palmer worm. God will accelerate that in the latter part of your life if you'll surrender today. Maybe it's not hidden or outward as we describe. Maybe it's a storm that came against your life, a sudden divorce, a bankruptcy, the loss of a loved one, a sudden illness, the betrayal of a close friend, the loss of a job, or COVID-19, or something that came along that took the wind out of your sails and you don't even know how to get back. The Bible says, Acts 3 and verse 19, repent and be converted that your sins may be blotted out, that the times of refreshing, of recovering from the effects of the heat, of reviving with fresh air will come from the presence of the Lord. Today, God will revive you, renew you, restore you, refresh you if you surrender. And then lastly, if you're in this place, you love the Lord, but you're not sure. I talked about it early. I want you to have that helmet on your head today. 
where you know beyond a shadow of a doubt, I am a child of God. I'm saved. And you'll have that assurance that'll be there with you. If you fit into any one of these three categories, I wanna pray with you and for you. Quickly, right where you are, put your hand up right now, say pray for me. I need Jesus. God bless you back there. God bless you back here. God bless you over here. God bless you lady over here. God bless you young lady there. God bless you sir over there. God bless you young man here. God bless you lady over there. Put it up high. God bless you over here. God bless you over there. God bless you on the far side over there. Right at the back over there. Quickly raise it up high so I can see it. I want to pray with you and for you. Today is your day of freedom and liberty. Thank you. Right back over here. Hands under the overhang. You can put your hands down. I want you to look at me, please. Look at me. In this section here, you didn't raise your hand, but you want to be included in the prayer. We're going to pray right now for these invitations. Quickly, put your hand up and say, include me. Anybody else? God bless you, sister. Anybody else? Anyone else? I've seen your hand already, brother. Anybody else under the overhand? Right back over there. This section here, put your hand up quickly. Right back there. I see your hand. This section. Didn't raise your hand. I was five years old when I raised my hand and walked the aisle. This section here, you didn't raise your hand, but want to be included. I'm going to ask everybody that raised your hand to stand your feet. I should if you'd help them, please. I want to pray with you and for you. Stand your feet. Everyone that raised your hand all across the building. I want you to come from where you are. Come stand here. We're going to lead you in a prayer. Come right now. Those of you in your homes, as I pray with them, I want you to pray with me. I want you to invite Jesus to come in your heart. If you mean busy with God today, God means busy with you. I want you to know how much He loves you. That's why He sent Jesus to die for you on the cross and to shed His blood for you. You can't buy your salvation. You can't even earn it. But you have to humble yourself. You have to humble yourself to receive it. He calls you today. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. Let me let me say this. You know, I, I sold two vehicles, two vans. For the kids week and the youth week because I'm leaving God for leader buses that's one of the things that's been greatly hampered at this time because all the attack in the media lies about the church and then just the cut off from us bringing people from the inner city certain places we can't our altars are always 120 150 and then for our big outreach Sundays four or five hundred we've even had 1900 people saved on one Sunday yeah so, unfortunately, there's certain things we are greatly restricted in. And then also, of course, people believe the lies about the river church. You know. Don't go there. You'll die. <laughs> Even though nobody's died. Don't go there. You're not going to die here. You could die at the gas station, but you're not dying here. You're not dying here. So obviously that's the thing that frustrates me more than you can ever know because I know how we've been, we've been hindered. But I believe that as we go, God's going to give us the open door and everything's going to flip. Are you with me? Plus, look at the hundreds of people that were saved last week because of one-on-one evangelism. So we'll get them. We're going to get them either way. Can you say amen? All right. I want you to stretch your hand out towards these precious people. You that are standing here, I want you to close your eyes and raise your right hand to heaven. That's where your help comes from and pray this together with me. Believe it in your heart and say it with your mouth. Those at home, pray this together. Say this out loud. Say, Father, I come to you 
in the precious name of your son, Jesus. Lord, you said in your word, if I confess with my mouth, Jesus is my Lord and my Savior. And I believe in my heart that God has raised you from the dead. I will be saved. So Father, right now, I confess Jesus is my Lord and my Savior. Come into my heart right now. Take out the stony heart. Put in a heart of flesh. Wash me. Cleanse me. Change me. Fill me. Use me. Let me never be the same again. I turn my back on the world. I turn my back on sin. And I follow you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for dying for me. Thank you for shedding your blood for me. Thank you that on the third day you rose for me. And thank you that you're coming back again for me. From this day on, I'll never be the same again. I confess Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. He is my Lord and my Savior. And right now, by faith in the finished work of the cross and by the shed blood of Jesus, I am saved. Thank you, Lord, for saving me now. Just lift your hands. Father, I pray that you would seal them now by your blood and by your spirit, that on that day not one would be missing. Raise them up to be mighty men and women of God and use them to impact this generation, we pray in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. Thank you for watching today on YouTube. Please press the subscribe button and also the notification button and like and get the word out so others can watch.